Good day viewers, you are welcome to this tutorial class. In this class, we want to look at circle theorem. In one of our previous videos, we have proved the theorem 1 of the circle theorem. And quickly, we want to go over the important one that will be useful for us in calculating solving problem in circle. So the theorem 1, looking at it here, we have the angle at the center of the circle is twice the angle at the circumference. So we have the diagram. We just look at the theorem with the head of the diagram briefly. So theorem 1 states that angle at the center, we have the center of the circle and we have a chord. Angle subtended by this chord at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So we have the angle at the circumference. So if angle at the circumference is given to be x, angle at the center will now be given as 2x. What the theorem is saying is that angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. And the opposite direction as well will be the angle at the center, which is the reflex angle here. If we call that one as 2y, so angle at the circumference here, which is on the opposite direction, we now be y. So here we have is angle at the circumference and we have angle at the center. So you must know the difference between the two. When the angle at the circumference is on this side, the reflex angle there will be the angle at the center. But if it is on the other side, also the interior angle here will be the angle at the center. So, angle at the center is twice the angle at the opposite circumference. This theorem one is very important. You can watch the first video we upload on that so as to know how to prove this theorem. Then, the second theorem, theorem two, states that all the angles obtained by a chord in a segment are equal. So, we look at it with the, with the aid of diagram. Angle in the same segment are equal. Given a circle center O, then you have a chord. All the angles obtained by this chord in one segment. Because this chord divides this circle into two parts. We have the major segment and the minor segment. So all the angles obtained by this chord, subtend by this chord means that formed by this chord. So this angle can be formed by this chord. This angle is formed by this chord. Also, another angle can be formed by this chord. You have this angle as well, formed by this chord, at this part. And also, another angle can be formed by this chord. You have this angle as well, formed by this chord. So we can have as many as angles formed by this chord KB. So all these angles formed by this chord in one segment are said to be equal. And the proof of this theorem is also gotten from theorem 1. From the construction here, when we join this A to the center, and we join B to the center, the angle at the center is this angle. And if the angle at the circumference is here, let's call this angle X. From theorem 1, angle at the circumference is X, then angle at the center will be 2 times of that, which is 2x. And also from there, we can also see that this angle is also at the circumference. If we call this one as C, D, E. So this angle A, E, B is also at the circumference. And we can call this one as well X. Why? Because this angle is centered to that. The same with, thing with angle A, C, B. So we can also call that one x. Why? Because the angle at the center to that is also 2x. So therefore, angle in the same segment are equal. You must be able to recognize when we have the same segment. That's also theorem 2. And theorem 3. Theorem 3 states that angle in the semicircle is right angle. That is angle 90 degree. We have a circle center O. 
and semicircle is gotten when we have a diameter that is a line that passes through the center of the circle. So this is the diameter passing through the center hole of the circle. That is when we can have a, a semicircle. Now, angle subtended by this, by this diameter, AD, that this angle formed by this diameter is right angle. That is angle 90 degree. So it's right angle. That is the theorem 3. That is angle in a semicircle is right angle. The theorem of this theorem 3 as well follow from theorem 1. That is angle at the center is twice angle at the circumference. And the angle at the center here is angle on a straight line. This line AB is the center, which is angle on a straight line. And angle on a straight line is 180 degree. Sum of angle on a straight line is 180 degree. Therefore, since angle at the center is 180 degree, then angle at the circumference will now be half of angle at the center, which is 180 degree over 2, and which will be 90 degree. That is why we have angle in a semicircle to be 90 degrees. Then the next theorem, theorem 4. The theorem 4 of the circle theorem states that a line drawn from the center of a circle. We have a circle with center O. A line drawn from the center of a circle to a curve. Let's call this called AB. Now, a line is drawn from the center O of a circle to this curve. The line drawn from the center of a circle to a curve is perpendicular to the curve. That this means at right angle to the curve and also bisect the curve. Divide the curve into two equal parts. If this point is N, it means that AN is equal to BN. So we have equal distance now. And also, we have a line drawn from O to A, which we call a radius. We can form a triangle there, which is a right angle triangle. Also, from here, we have a radius R, R. Then we have two right angle triangles, which are similar here. If any side is missing here, we can easily find it. Sometimes some question will have given all the distance from the center to this spot. And it will have given us the radius. And it will say we should find the length of the curve. Then from there, we can pick one of the right angle triangle and solve using Pythagoras theorem. And what we have got in A, then the length of the curve, AB, will just be 2 multiplied by either A or B. So that is the usefulness of that theorem 4 there. It's very, very important theorem as well. Theorem 5. The theorem 5 states that the opposite angle of a cyclic quadrilateral, the whole cyclic, cyclic quadrilateral, the opposite angles of a cyclic collateral are supplementary. And what is the meaning of a cyclic collateral? A collateral is tried in a circle. A collateral is a four sided shape. Inscribed in a circle means that its four angles touch the circumference of the circle. Its four vertices touch the circumference of the circle. So if I have this four sided shape with its four angles, is touch touching the circumference of a circle, I can call this shape now a cyclic quadrilateral. Because it's a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle. Now the theorem says that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. That is, add up to 180 degree. We have the opposite angle. Let's call this one x. Let's call this one y. What the theorem is saying is that x plus y will be equals to 180 degree. Opposite angle of a cyclic collateral add up to 180 degree. And the same way, this side and this side are opposite. We can call this side angle A, let's call this side angle B. Then A plus B also add up to 180 degrees. So this 
in the theorem 5, which is also important theorem in safety theorem. Opposite angle with psychoelectral add up to 180 degree. The proof of the theorem is also from theorem 1. So that's the reason why we must be able to prove theorem 1 very well. And theorem 6. The theorem 6 here is derived from this theorem 5. By saying exterior angle of a cyclic collateral is equal to the opposite interior angle. We have a cyclic collateral that is a collateral inscribed in a circle. A cyclic collateral. Then the exterior angle of a cyclic collateral is equal to the opposite interior angle. If any side of this is extended. It might be any side. It might be any side. So we can extend this side like this. This angle here, in between this line and this line, is the exterior angle. So if this angle is x degrees, then what the term is saying is that the exterior angle here, which is x degrees, is equal to the opposite interior angle. Then the opposite interior angle is this angle. That means this angle is also x degrees. Then if any other side is extended, be it this side extended, you can call this angle as y degree. So the interior opposite angle here as well will be y degree. That is the theorem 6. That is the exterior angle of a cyclic collateral is equal to the opposite interior angle. We are stopping here in this class. We look at theorem 1 to 6, which are very, very important theorem if we want to be able to solve questions on second theorem which is very important aspect of mathematics. You can watch over again so as to master this theorem and also practicalize it by listing it down with the aid of the diagram because once you can recognize the theorem, you'll be able to solve questions. We are continuing from here in our next class, from theorem 7, by God's grace. We shall be looking at the remaining theorem. So therefore, if you have not yet subscribed to this channel, you can as well subscribe and turn your notification on to receive notification when we upload videos. Thanks for watching and we we'll say bye for now.